Great, uh, thank you very much. I think this will be an interesting additional uh, presentation and thanks to the speakers that uh, preceded me. Um, I'm representing a, an initiative called Boundless Southern Africa, which is an umbrella marketing um, brand for transfrontier conservation areas in, in Southern Africa. So um, the uh, Boundless brand was established uh, in 2005 when tourism and environment ministers came together in the run-up to planning for the, the World Cup, trying to find how... Um, one of the legacies of the World Cup could be how to re represent the, the Southern African area. And they felt that the transfrontier conservation areas um, were a good example of uh, a regional uh, product, a regional tourism experience. Um, so initially, the idea was then to um, develop a, a, a marketing initiative to focus on raising awareness of these transfrontier conservation areas as tourism uh, destinations. And uh, it, there was a two-phase uh, program. Um, the first 10 years have been in uh, phase one, which has been the six uh, TFCAs that South Africa is part of, as well as the Kabango Zambezi uh, Transfrontier Conservation Area uh, between Namibia, Botswana, Zambia, Zimbabwe and Angola. Uh, we've recently been uh, are in the process of getting a green light for, for working now in all 18 uh, TFCAs uh, throughout the region because it is a bit of a strange situation only focusing on, on seven transfrontier parks whereas TFCAs are already across the whole of the Southern African development community. Um, so the, the objectives of, of Boundless Southern Africa are, are ready to package uh, TFCAs um, as, as tourism uh, destinations to raise awareness of these transfrontier conservation areas, um, mainly through the development of cross-border events and hosting of, of media trips, which uh, Willine mentioned uh, earlier, um, and then really the, the marketing of these uh, transfrontier conservation areas uh, in, uh, to, to raise the, the number of increase the number of uh, visitors uh, to these TFCAs. Um, so I'm going to just uh, move straight on. Uh, one of the key strategies that we've, we've identified has been the development of these cross-border uh, tourism events and, and, and cross-border tourism products because it really gives us an opportunity to uh, work together um, around uh, developing an itinerary or developing a, a product that uh, straddles uh, both sides. So um, really was talking specifically about the, the conservation aspect and uh, the opening the migration routes again. So this work really is on uh, the, the tourism other side of, of, of the same coin, uh, really, to be able to have a, a tourist experience that uh, really it captures what the, the, that destination of the transfrontier conservation area is all about. Um, so the, the map at the top really is the, the phase one uh, map that shows the seven uh, TFCAs that we worked with in the initial phase. Um, from the left, the IIS Richterstel between Namibia and South Africa, then Khalakhari between Botswana and uh, South Africa, the Kabanga Zambezi. Uh, Great Mapungubu, Great Mapungubu between Zimbabwe, Botswana, and South Africa. The Great Limpopo between uh, South Africa, Zem, uh, Zimbabwe, and South Africa. Uh, Lubombo uh, TFCA between Swaziland, Mozambique, and South Africa, and then finally the Maluti Drakensberg. So, the examples of these uh, cross-border events um, are the Desert Nights, uh, which is a mountain bike tour of uh, seven days, uh, starting at the Fisher River Canyon cycling under the full moon uh, and ending in the Richtersfeld. So it's a f five days of cycling, one day paddling on the Orange River. And uh, a key component of these cross-border events is what we call an undesignated border crossing. So um, the tour starts in Namibia, it ends in South Africa, but we don't cross a formal border post. Uh, we make applications to the Department of Home Affairs. The Minister of Home Affairs on both sides actually signs permission. Um, they are the mandated... Uh, uh, agency or uh, uh, responsible to be able to allow us to do that, um, and so it's it's a really it's a very unique and very special uh, experience, and it kind of like pushes the edge of what is allowed, um, but then what's out of that edge then becomes a little bit normal. So that's also part of the the strategy is to um, really the long term idea is to be able to have a little bit of an easing of 
of the, these kind of like border controls. Um, another example in the IS Richtersfeld is the, the Desert Kayak Trails. Again, um, it's a four-day kayak experience uh, where you bounce uh, one night you're on the Namibian side, the other night you're on the South African side, um, and uh, that is then also something that has been sanctioned. The Richtersfeld Transfrontier Wild Run is a five-day, 200-kilometer trail running experience, this time starting in South Africa and finishing at the IIS uh, Resort in Namibia, similar to also with the undesignated uh, border crossing. In, the, in Mapungubo, we've got uh, the Transfrontier Wild Run, which takes place every May, um, and that's a three-day trail run. Uh, we spend four nights on the Limpopo River in Zimbabwe in a campsite, and uh, every day we run in a different in a different country, um, and that's uh, 30 k's of trail running uh, a day uh, in loops in a clover leaf formation. Uh, and then the the Ned Bank Tour de Tuli is is quite well known. It's a four day uh, mountain bike uh, tour again with the undesignated border crossings. Um, and then we're working on a number in the Great Limpopo, up in the north, uh, linking Pafuri and the Sengwe community in uh, Zimbabwe, uh, which is between uh, Konorizo and uh, Pafuri. Um, well, I'm going to just uh, get through a couple of slides. So, um, the, the whole process around uh, the development and promotion of these cross-border tourism products, there's, there's a lot of uh, benefits uh, that have come through. Uh, to an extent, benefits around the working together of the various agencies and stakeholders that are involved in the TFCA, but then also uh, benefits for uh, local communities living alongside. And that is always a very critical uh, element for us to uh, maximize the opportunities and the, the exposure that uh, we are able to give to uh, rural communities. Um, so, here yeah, I can just quickly run through a few slides of the various, um, some of the, the cross-border products. So, the Desert Nights uh, I've already alluded to. Um, this really just gives an idea of the, the kind of, of benefits to the IS Richterstar Transfrontier Park. Um, so, uh, this was the information for 2016. There was a total of 2 million rand of uh, entrance fees, uh, uh, registration fees. That, uh, that came to the park. Um, there was 90,000 of that goes towards camping and entrance fees. So that's, that's one um, stream of income uh, that uh, then goes to the park. Uh, we have community caterers um, that, that earn quite a large amount of uh, money by uh, doing a traditional Nama uh, meal on the final night as a, as a final festival. And that brings in the cultural aspect. Um, the gear bags were made from a local supplier um, in Port Nollis um, that we've been working with as a part of the um, supplier development uh, program. Um, and then, obviously, there's always uh, a couple of temporary jobs uh, that are created. This is a picture of some of the local uh, cyclists that then are also given the opportunity to participate in the event. And this is um, always a very key aspect uh, in the events that we do to try and incorporate uh, people from the area that can experience the cross-border event in its, in its entirety, that they're not there just to build tents, uh, but they're also there um, to uh, cycle. So um, they've, they've all uh, participated, uh, and there she is in the middle. She's actually a massage therapist from the IS Hot Springs Resort. She was on the tour one year uh, to do the massages, and she came to us and said she wanted to cycle the next one, and she's now done three, three tours um, so this is just uh, an example of the, the first day's uh, cycling. It is a posed photo, so not everybody gets that close to the Fisher River Canyon. Um, but it is a, it's an amazing, the first day is a 30k cycle with the um, idea of getting to uh, the, the canyon edge uh, during the late afternoon as the sun is setting. Uh, this is an example of one of the evening shots. Uh, the Desert Nights is specifically held in April and September uh, over the full moon. Uh, so, and most of the cycling takes place late in the afternoon and into the evening. So that also gives a totally different uh, experience. This is an example of the community caterers um, that prepare the Nama meal. Uh, these are the gear bags that have been made. Um, and one of the targets really then also is uh, what we call socially transformed and transitioned communities. And that really is 
a part of the DNA um, of these uh, products. So as I've mentioned, um, getting local community cyclists uh, involved um, and uh, and uh, bringing that in. And then there's also always quite a strong uh, training element. Uh, for example, we had two uh, young guys from uh, the IS Rector Start that did a, um, a bicycle mechanic training also so that the bikes that are left behind in the IS Rector Start then are also able to remain in working condition. Um, right, that's just a couple of pictures. Right, um, then... Uh, Oh, yeah, the awareness raising is always uh, quite a quite a big thing. A large part of the element then also is that tourism marketing side of things, where we get uh, media to come and join us. Um, we just had a German um, writer that did an incredible amount of work in Germany, and um, we've already got twenty uh, interested participants uh, from Germany to join us on on next year's tours. Um, these are then just some examples of the, the wild run. This is the, one of the ranges from Sand Parks in the Richtersfeld. Um, he participated in the, in the wild run and did, did really well. He obviously knows the landscape quite well. That's just a, a picture of behind an area called the Faith Sisters um, in the Richtersfeld. This is heading up towards the Tartusberg. Just a couple of pictures of, of the, the Transfrontier uh, wild run. Um, and that's uh, very much uh, a similar case so with, with the same kind of uh, benefits, um, identifying some uh, local uh, players to participate and also then the, the local e employment opportunities for the duration of that event. Um, this is an interesting slide. It uh, speaks specifically to the, the Mapungubo Trans Frontier Wild Run, uh, which I mentioned there specifically, uh, we've identified the, the campsite to be on the Zimbabwe side of the, uh, just north of the Mapungubo National Park. And, um, they are long, they're quite a big, one of the challenges in the Greater Mapungubo Transfrontier Park is, is that there's a lot of cattle that gets brought uh, over on a daily basis from Zimbabwe, uh, into the Mapungubo National Park. So it makes for a very, interesting experience being in the Vembe Wilderness Camp and having 200 cattle with their bells kind of like passing you by. Um, and so this is one of the, the longer term attempts to try and create uh, some kind of constructive engagement with the Maramani community. Um, and there's now a campsite that's just on the, on the northern side um, of, the, of the Limpopo River and their attempt to try and create better economic opportunities through, through tourism um, that hopefully will lead to some kind of way of stopping uh, those cattle uh, coming into the Mapungubo National Park. But it's, uh, it's a long-term long project. <laughs> um, the, the fourth point there is also an interesting one, training of rangers to guide the running of herds. This is a big five country minus the buffalo. Um, and the trail running goes through that, uh, that area. So the, the, the mitigation, the risk mitigation around that is to run, uh, with experienced rangers in herds. Um, so groups of 20 to, to 30 runners. So it's no race. Uh, it's really a, a journey, um, on, on foot. Um, and we had rangers from each of the three countries participate. And for many, uh, it was the first time that they had traversed the other sections of the Transfrontier Park on foot. Um, so that's been a really uh, a good example also of some of the, the, um, the, the benefits um, that are not so clear um, when we are busy planning for it, but that really are, that, that helps to sustain some of that teamwork that's necessary in, in these TFCAs. Um, Right, so this is just an example of the a campsite that uh, Chesby also actually um, built in Maramani. So this is on the Zimbabwe side. These are some of the, the local uh, ladies that uh, were employed in the kitchen, uh, well, the kitchen outdoor. And the whole idea around the way that the catering was uh, done here was also to um, use very much the, the, the local knowledge to be able to then um, be able to use as much of the local resource as possible. This is the outdoor immigration office. Uh, so we have immigration officers from the various countries that stay with us in camp. These are the Zimbabwe immigration guys. This is the Limpopo River on the left-hand side. And this was uh, the team being stamped into Zimbabwe on, on the registration day. 
uh, some of the ladies. Um, this is crossing the Shashi River from Zimbabwe into Botswana on day two. And that's uh, in the Tuli Safari area, Tuli Circle. Uh, that's on the Mapungubwe Hill, uh, the World Heritage Site. Um, and then this is just a couple of slides of the Nedbank uh, Tour de Tuli. Uh, that's the Minister of, of Tourism from Botswana, um, Zakama. He's a, a big proponent of, uh, a supporter of, of these initiatives. Um, this again is now on the Botswana side, um, coming through from Botswana. It's a bit of a grubby day into Zimbabwe. Um, and the Dead Bank Tour de Tuli specifically is a fundraiser for uh, children in the wilderness. And they have an incredible uh, program, um, which is briefly indicated there. They have a, an incredible program structure um, that starts with eco clubs. Um, across uh, about eight different countries and areas where they work, uh, heading up all the way to scholarships for secondary schools. And so that, again, is a, a very specific uh, type of cross-border event with a certain uh, output. I've been told to stop, but this is a, a picture of one of the, uh, the, the Tri-Nations uh, school camp uh, that's going to be held next month. Uh, a group of five uh, youngsters from each of the three countries making up the Greater Mapungubwe um, are brought uh, together um, into the Mapungubwe National Park and they have a three-day um, eco-training program that's, that's international from three countries. Um, and then just finally, this is really just a, a quick snapshot of the, the broad overview of, of, of benefits. So I could go into a lot more detail, but one of the big ones is the teamwork between officials and stakeholders from the different countries making up the TFCAs. It's always easier if you're working towards a specific project with a certain timeline to really make things happen, especially in government circles. Um, and uh, and uh, working across the borders with different stakeholders and different government processes can be a little bit uh, nerve-wracking. Um, but up to now, we've managed to 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 get it right, especially also the undesignated border crossing, coordinating immigration officials, etc. It's uh, interesting. Um, the temporary opportunities uh, for for employment. What that also does, though, it creates. Um, an opportunity for unemployed uh, people to also then become uh, possibly involved in the other programs because they are uh, um, the local uh, conservation agencies are involved and they are part of a selection process, etc. So it, it does open up uh, another step closer to possible employment. Um, the developing of ambassadors from local communities is really an important one, both from a point of view of those that are temporarily employed as well as those that are able to participate um, in this, um, in an event. Um, the undesignated border crossing is, an, is a critical uh, factor um, for unlocking this, but at the same time it also brings together in a, in a fairly safe environment uh, members of the security cluster, of the immigrations, of, of customs, etc. And those are the guys that really need to understand what the potential is for tourism in this kind of like cross-border uh, environment because they then are also ambassadors that go back into their respective uh, structures and make it easier. We have seen um, definite progress in, in this and make it easier that when we are going to be discussing the idea of a cross-border tourism, something or other around a TFCA, there is a little bit of a better understanding what that means. And it's not just opening the, the, the floodgates or opening the borders totally, that there is a, a context uh, within which that happens. Um, and then one of the big things we're working on now is uh, shifting from just having a few annual events um, to having uh, tourism products that are held in more regular, on a more regular basis, which will then increase the spin-offs from a, an employment point of view, um, etc. And on that, we've got a, we're busy working with a consultant that's developing a, helping us to work on a guideline for the development of these cross-border tourism events so that we can replicate um, all the lessons that we've learned and be able to start having this suite of, of tourism products uh, established across the TFCAs within the, within the region. Um, I've got a few brochures. Uh, if you could just show it up, we'll leave it here in front if anybody is interested. This is just a, a brochure that we did for the, the International Tourism Burst in Berlin um, in March uh, this year, and it showcases eight of these transfrontier conservation areas. 
Um, and that really just gives an idea of um, what we're trying to do in this fund. Thank you.